What if you could build one AI solution that not only makes your current job easier, but also becomes a product that you can sell to other businesses? That's exactly what I did with this inventory management agent. It saved my boss hours every week, earned me a raise, and eventually led me to leave that job to work as an AI consultant full time. I help builders and freelancers land AI automation clients and build scalable businesses. So if that's you, click the link down in the description and join my free school community. You can take part in the four week challenge to land your first or next AI automation client. Now let's dive into the build. Alrighty, so this is the agent that I built. And basically to give a little bit of context into what I do for my nine to five, I'm technically the marketing coordinator for my job, but about six, seven months ago, I started learning more about AI and tinkering around with it and figuring out how I could use it to make things better at my workplace. So something that we really struggled with was tracking our inventory. What our inventory system used to be was everything was on a piece of paper or in a like a Excel spreadsheet. And we would have to count the physical inventory every single week slash day. One of the big problems that we have or that we used to have because we are an installation company is we have our crews that would go out to people's houses and they would be installing whole house fans or blowing in insulation or removing insulation, doing all the normal day-to-day -day stuff. But because we weren't tracking inventory effectively, oftentimes we would be ordering stuff that we didn't need, which is, you know, costing money unnecessarily, or we would not be ordering stuff that we did need. And so then we would have to have the guys stop what they were doing, go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot, or go buy, you know, a whole house fan at our supplier and then drive all the way back to the job site, which was, you know, costing time and money. So I saw that that was a problem. And so I decided to use some of my AI skills to fix that problem. And so basically what I built is a workflow using an AI agent in this platform called N8N. If you're not familiar, N8N allows you to build workflows, which is basically stuff that works on autopilot. You can incorporate AI into it to make things smarter, faster. And let me just walk through exactly how I built this. So we have a Telegram trigger, which the guys on our team all have Telegram app on their phone and they can send a message. The AI, AI agent receives that message and then it's going to look for the record in Airtable, update the appropriate record with the new inventory number, and then let the the person on our team know that it's been updated. So let me show you an example. So this is like a list of our inventory. So we have, you know, vehicle supplies, bags of insulation, cans of spray foam, different kinds of fans, that type of it. So each guy on our team is going to have our Tyson inventory bot on his phone. And so basically when they're out in the field, if they use 30 bags of insulation, they can make that update when they're in the car or in the vehicles driving back to the office. And when we receive inventory, it's super easy to update. So let me show you an example here. All right. So let's say I want to update the number of gloves that we have. So let's say we got, I don't know, 50 boxes of gloves. So I told the inventory bot to add 50 gloves. And then you can see right here, it's updating from 22 to 72. And so now the inventory bot is telling us gloves has 72 in inventory. And so why that's so helpful is, you know, let's say I'm out in the field, I'm one of the installers and I'm like, how many whole house fan remotes do we have? The guys out in the field could type that in in regular English and then the inventory bot will respond. So we have 10 in inventory, as you can see right here, that matches. And so it works to add items to inventory, it works to subtract items from inventory, or just to ask how many items that we do have in inventory. So that way, if the guys are out and they're like, oh, shoot, we forgot to bring a fan with us, they can ask if we have it in inventory before driving to Lowe's or Home Depot to pick something up. So now let me show you how you can build this for yourself. All right, so first things first, go to N8N. If you don't have an account already, you can sign up for one. The link is down in the description you're gonna click create workflow. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is add a trigger. So in this case, we're gonna add Telegram and the trigger is gonna be on message, meaning like whenever a message comes in, it's going to trigger this workflow. All right, and I already have the inventory bot set up, but if you wanted to add a new credential, then you just go right here to create new credential. So you're gonna come over to Botfather type in slash new bot, and then it's going to walk you through the steps for how to name it and how to get your access token, etc. So this is my access token, which I'm not going to show you because I don't want you messaging my bot. But once you have grabbed your access token, you can come back over here 
paste it into the access token field, and then you can change the name here so it's something easy to remember and click save. I'm not going to do that since I already have this set up. And then it's going to be trigger on message and we'll name this workflow inventory testing. And I like to save my workflows frequently so that it doesn't, I don't lose all my work. Okay, so now we're going to test this so we can get some data in here. I'm just going to say hi. And so you can see that it turned green with the green check mark and that means that it tested successfully. So now I can connect my next node. I'm going to set up an edit fields or set node. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I am eventually going to connect Telegram voice. Right now, I just have it set up as text only, but I want to have this in there so that it's easier to add voice down the road. Okay, so I'm just going to come down here to my message where I said hi, and that's the text field here. I'm going to drag that over and it's going to look like this. We're going to keep everything else as is, and then I'll test that by clicking the play button and you can see that it created an output, so that's good to go. Okay, so now the next step is to add the actual AI agent. Okay, and then now the source for the prompt, I'm gonna change that to define below. And I'm gonna drag in the text from the edit fields node that just came before this. And I'm also going to add a system message. So your agent in NADN is nothing without a system message. These are the instructions that tell it how to think, how to process the data that are coming in, and what kind of response to give. And I also wanna require a specific specific output format. The reason being is that I want it to the agent to make sure that it's getting the right data from my inventory database and it's going to be very specific so it knows exactly what to do and there's no gray area for it to mess up. And so you can see it's telling me to connect an output parser. I'm going to show you how to do that in just one sec. First, let's dive into the system message. Okay, so I already have these system instructions built. If you're wondering what all this funky looking notation is, this is XML format. The reason why I'm using XML is that whenever I'm using like a structured output or it requires a structured output, which in this case it does, it just makes it easier, cleaner, helps the agent to understand its role and what it needs to take in and what it needs to produce as its output. So this agent handles inventory queries and updates by interfacing with an Airtable database. It extracts details from user input to either return the current inventory information or update the inventory count. So this is just laying out exactly what it needs to do, letting it know exactly how to process the data that are coming in. And then it's telling it to return a JSON object with a message key stating item is not in inventory if there isn't something on the inventory list. So it's giving it exactly how to provide an output, exactly how to update inventory for adding to inventory, etc. And so it's walking through every kind of use case that the user can throw at it and structuring that so that the agent understands exactly how to behave. Quick side tip, basically you can use GPT, I would say 03 at the time that I'm making this video to get a really good XML output. Just write down exactly what you want your bot to do or your agent to do. Tell your tell GPT-03 to change this into XML instructions, and then you can copy and paste that into your agent. All right, so now we've set up our agent. We need to connect a LLM so that it has a, a brain. And I'm going to use OpenAI. I have already have my OpenAI account connected. If you don't have one, go to platform.openai.com create an account. It's not the same as your chat GPT account. Get your API key, throw some money on there. Five bucks is enough to start and then you'll connect it here. So you'll just need your API key like I have mine here. If you have questions, drop it in the comments and I'll help you out. Winnie. And I'm just going with GPT 4.0 mini. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. The next thing I'm going to do is just add simple memory. I'm going to leave it at five and then I'm going to need to define the session ID, which I'm going to get from Telegram. Okay, so I'm going to drag that in there. And so now it's going to be able to remember back five conversations ago so that the model can have context. Okay, so now I have to connect the structured output parser and now it's going to ask for a JSON example. Now I already have mine pre-made, but you want to basically give it all the information it's going to need in order to create an output that's easily plugged into an Airtable or other database. So right here I have my record ID, the inventory type, the number in inventory, reorder threshold, and the item. It's important that these headers match whatever is in your database. So we'll talk more about the Airtable database in just one sec. So this is the database that I have set up. I'm going to walk you through exactly how you can set up your own. So just come here to Airtable. Again, if you need a link down in the description and you can click on it and set up a free account. 
I'm going to click create and start from scratch. Okay, so it's going to come with this pre-built database and I'm going to call this inventory. So this is where you're going to add headers and change these header types to something that makes sense for you. So if I'm making an inventory database, the first thing I'm going to do is change this to inventory and I'm going to leave this as single line text. Now I want to know how many in inventory. And so I'm going to take that and make it a number. And I don't really need this, but you can add inventory type and then you can have it be a single select field. So let's say everything is either going to fall into two categories, job materials or vehicles. Obviously, you can customize this for your own needs, but those are pretty much what we need to order for at my job. Okay, I'm just going to get delete that last one. And then I'm going to change this to needs reorder. And I want this to be a formula. Now the formula is going to be if the number in inventory is less than the reorder threshold, then it will say yes in this column. Otherwise it will say no. Okay. Now I'm just going to add a couple test items in here. So let's say toothbrushes. Maybe you work for a dentist. I don't know. We have 45. The reorder threshold is 25. And I'm going to call that job materials. So as you can see, it doesn't need to be reordered because we have more in stock than what the threshold is. Now let's say toothpaste. So we have 37 in inventory and the reorder threshold is 40. So you can see that that one's automatically getting flagged as something that we need to reorder. I'm sorry. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this table. So I'm going to go here, duplicate table. I don't want to duplicate the record. So I'm going to click that, leave that clicked off. And I'm going to rename this output. Now for this, this is where items are going to automatically show up when they flip over to yes for ne needs reorder. So needs reorder, I'm going to go ahead and hide this field because we don't need it. Everything that's on here is going to be something that needs to be reordered. But I am going to add a new field that's going to be a checkbox field. And this is just going to be called reordered. I'm also going to add a last modified by field so that we can see who reordered it. And I'm going to name it has been ordered. And then lastly, I'm going to put a filter on here and you'll see everything come together in just a sec. I'm going to add a condition where, where reordered is checked off and we're going to see items come into both of these views in just a second when we are testing. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is build an automation right here within Airtable. So I'm going to click the automations tab and open that up. And what I want to do is whenever an item drops below the threshold for reorder, meaning it needs to be reordered, I want a record to automatically come into this output view in my output table. Okay, so I'm gonna add a trigger when a record is updated, and now I'm gonna select the fields. So the field that I want to select is down here at the bottom, needs reorder, so I'm gonna to toggle that on. All right, and let's test this step and see what comes up. All right, so I'm gonna add some conditional logic. So if needs reorder is yes, let's test those conditions. Okay, so we have an output, I'm gonna add an action. It's going to create a record in the output table, and then we are going to add all of the fields here. So we're gonna dynamically map everything that is in the original database, the inventory database. So we'll start here with, and I'm just going through and mapping everything that is in all of our column headers right here. All right, and now let's test it. Okay, so let's start just matching these up. So inventory should correspond with inventory. Gonna add another field for number in inventory, change it to dynamic, and then select number in inventory. And we're gonna go down the line and do this for each header. Inventory type change this to dynamic. All right, so we have inventory, the number in inventory, the reorder threshold, and the inventory type all mapped. And now let's generate a preview. All right, and now let's go check out our database. Okay, let's turn this on and test the automation. All right, and now we see it over here. Now, if somebody reorders, they're going to click that they reordered here. It's going to fall off this view and drop it to has been ordered by me. And that way we can have accountability and know who's doing what. Okay, let's go back over to N8N and we're gonna complete our agent setup. So let's click the trash can and delete that test data. And let's go ahead and give our agent some real data to work with. How many bags of insulation do we have? Okay, I'm gonna click test workflow, send the message. Okay, so everything went through good. That's awesome. And obviously it's not connected to Airtable at this point, so it's not gonna know how many items that we have in stock. And so what we're going to do now is connect it via its tools. So click here at the plus sign under 
tools. Okay, so now we're going to add the tools. We're going to add two different Airtable tools. And the first is going to be search because we want it to be able to search for the items that we're referencing when we send the queries through Telegram. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and select the correct base from my list, which is N8 and test. It's going to be querying the inventory list. And I'm going to let the model define the parameters here because it's pretty smart. And so it's probably going to know what it's doing, but we'll test it out and see. Okay. So now it has the ability to search Airtable and now we're going to give it the opportunity or the ability to update a record. I could use create or update, but I don't want people to just be able to add items to inventory all willy nilly. Like maybe they accidentally add something and it just screws things up. So adding items is going to be for our pr production manager and everybody else gets the ability to add or subtract to the quantity and also make queries. All right. So again, I'm going to connect it to my NADN test base to the inventory table. And I'm just going to let the model define all of these parameters. So it's going to define the ID, which is the inventory, the number in inventory. And I'm not going to have it do anything with also the reorder threshold. And for inventory type, I don't really need that for this use case. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All right, now let's give it a spin and see how it does. So I'm going to ask it how many toothbrushes that we have in inventory. Okay, let's come back over here. Click test, send the message. It's thinking and let's see what it came up with. So toothbrushes, as you can see, it created it in the structured output that we wanted, which is perfect. Now the last step is we just need to connect it to Telegram so that it can send a response. So come back in here at the Telegram node and it's going to send a text message. Make sure it's connected to our right Telegram bot. Okay, so we wanna make sure we're mapping the correct chat ID. Okay, so we'll pull this in and all we're gonna want it to say, and we could make it more complex, but we're not gonna do that, is the item has, and then the number in inventory, all right? And then I'm just a personal preference, but I'm gonna come and take the append NADN attribution off, and then let's test this step. So I got a pop-up message. So toothbrushes has 45 in inventory. All right, so it looks like our Telegram inventory agent is good to go. Just for fun, I'm gonna test this workflow one more time, and I'm gonna say add 10 toothbrushes, please. And then if we come over to our database, it took a minute, but as you can see, it automatically updated to 55 and we received the confirmation message. So everything is good to go there. Now, lastly, if something drops below the threshold that, you know, where it needs to be ordered. So let's go ahead and make this 45 and then we'll drop both of these lower. So 22. So toothbrushes and toothpaste just dropped in here. And so now we could do anything we want with this. We can connect this to, depending on how important it is that the person responsible for ordering knows about this, like if it needs to be immediate or if it can wait, we could add a step to send an email at the end of each day or send an automated text message or whatever the case is. But that way you have a really clean inventory database. So this is everything that we have in stock. And obviously this could be hundreds of items long. And then if this is reordered, I can click here. That's gonna drop in here as you can see it shows that it was reordered by me. Now you know how to build an AI powered inventory management system that you can use at your nine to five and sell to other businesses. If you wanna take part in the free four week challenge to land your first or next AI client, click the link down below and join my free school community. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.